Hi, I'm Randy, and I'm going to do a little quick overview on a pre-trip on a trailer. Normally, you should get out and do what I call a pre-hookup inspection, which is get out before you even hook up, do a, right, a rough walk around, but also to make sure the pin height is correct so you don't high hook the, the trailer or you don't you have too much height and you don't pay attention and you ran the front of the trailer into the back of the truck. So it's good to get out, back the truck up to the front, get out, do a quick overview, even a quick walk around then. Also making sure that you have good stability underneath your landing legs because especially if you're picking up a loaded trailer and you have all the weight on the legs and for some reason one of them is bent or broken you go hit in the back of the trailer instead of lifting the trailer up you're going to push the trailer back and drop the nose of the trailer so it's good to always get out check all that but once you have to hook up you hook up your glad hands energize at least the emergency side then get out of the truck and start here in the corner Basically, you're looking for anything that's that's damaged, the port of fender, any of the sheets, the stainless steel. Look up underneath the fender, you, like for the supports for the quarter fender, make sure they're not bent or broken. You just continue on back, still checking all the uh, sections of the outer skin. When you come up to the subframe where the landing legs are, once again, look at everything, make sure all your bolts are there. Nothing looks weird about the mounting bolts. Check to make sure that the legs are still pretty much straight up and down. And if they're not bent or twisted, check your supports. Make sure they're not twisted, bent, broken, whatever. Especially, that's all important because especially since we do drop loaded trailers, you put 20, 30,000 pounds of product on those landing legs. They need to be in good condition or else you're gonna have them collapse and nose down. Once you check all that out, continue on. And since this is a liquid trailer, you look at the piping for all your belly lines. Make sure that there's not a lot of wetness at all the junctions, signifying like a loose or a, a broken gasket or loose bolts through the, the, the flanges. <clears throat> and especially on this side, since all your hot discharge is on the right side, you can look at the back side from the left side of the vehicle as you're walking down here. So it's always good to scan from top to bottom and the ground at the same time as you're moving back. When you get back to the rear subframe and the rear tandems, you start on this side, you can usually always get a pretty good view of your brakes and your brake shoes and drums and, and uh, chamber from this side looking across check to make sure that your brake shoes are not too thin broken cracked all that stuff you should at this point also have your emergency side energized you can also look at the spacing between the shoes and the drums make sure that's not too wide that can signify that the brakes are out of adjustment need need adjusting need attention to or the automatic slacks so you should be able to adjust them if they're out of adjustment something's wrong you got to break it down and bring that to my business attention as you continue on this side you still look at your tires look at the general condition make sure the side walls are nice and clean no damage there look at your outer hub gaskets make sure there's no oil dripping or wetness uh, anywhere on the hub caps both of them and that's also the inner and outer hubcap seal this is the outer one this would be the inner one make sure that all that looks good and dry at the same time if you have clear lenses like on that you can look and check your oil level to make sure they're full of oil when you come back to the back do a quick scan underneath here same thing from the rear you should be able to look at both of your brakes from on the rear axle from each side like once again you check for thickness cracks missing pieces stuff like that you have your brakes energized again you should you can check the space in between the, the shoes and the drums looking for out of adjusted shoes and brakes and stuff like that one of the big problems we used to have around here is on these slack adjusters you can see here these slack adjusters are what they call a meritor type slack adjuster there's another type that's called a Bendix. They have an anchor on top 
There was a time whenever a lot of them would run through, they wouldn't put the anchor bolt on top of the slack. You hit the brakes once or twice, they would back completely off and you'd end up having no brakes. So that's something you need to look at too. Make sure they don't have those anchor pins missing if it's that type of, that type of slack adjuster. Once again, then at this time too, you'd have your lights on and stuff. Check to make sure all your lights are works, all your lights works, and all the lights are there and present. And usually for the tankers, they're all the same. You got your inner and outer lights on a light pod. That one has the license plate light. That light there is just stop light only. It's your uh, anti-collision light, and then the three clearance lights up on top. Reflective tape the whole way around on the front down each side and on the ICC bumpers when a lot of the older trailers missing torn off pieces it's supposed to be there's supposed to be a lot of it on it. I know the on the ICC bumper there's supposed to be a strip on both the top and the bottom if it's a double bumper like this if it's a single bumper it's still supposed to have a line across and you're supposed to have 100 square inches on the whole trail scan down make sure all your outer skins good check the tires again in and out of hub seal, check the level, make sure they're all nice and dry. Same way back up here, you can look over there. And when you're looking to, you want to make sure that everything's dry. If you come across oil dripping down the inside of the tires or the brakes looks wet, that's indicative of an inner wheel seal that's blown. That needs to be written up and taken because it pretty much makes the effectiveness of the braking at that wheel position pretty much zero. So you need to make sure your brakes are, are dry, oil-free, you know, contaminant-free. And another thing you got to watch out for, too. Somebody doesn't do a good job on the belly line. There's a leaky valve, leaky uh, API head, something like that. You'll have product that will drip, drip from there, come back, hit the front side of this, but also go back in there and start collecting on the inside of the brake and the drum to make it look like it's a blown wheel seal. The only way to tell the difference is to actually climb up underneath it, look in behind the webbing and the brake shoe, and look at the wheel seal itself. But if if, you, if something like that is leaking, you're pretty much only going to have it on the one side. But that's if you see wetness on one side up front and then continues on back, that's indicative of, of a bad API head seal or one of these flanges are leaking, something like that. I ran into a couple of them before too. <coughs> With the liquid tank, and especially coming into winter, these are very important that these work. If they're set up right, they are pretty accurate. But if the lens is missing, it's been exposed to the weather for a while, the inside looks, you know, crusty, corroded, contaminated, this does need to be replaced and, and swapped out because those are very important, especially with Exxon Mobil in the winter time from October to April. A lot of the products do have a temp range on them. These ladders have taken a beating around here. They've got to be straight. They've got to have points of contact on these sides. The bolts have to be all here. The ladders can't be bent up on the bottom and stuff. You crease these holes or these round stock, they become very weak. You go to step on that, they're bent, cracked, broken. Step on it, half the ladder will come apart and, and you'll fall back down the ground. You've got to make sure these are mounted on each side up here and up on top. There's a rack up there. You see the bolts up there where it's attached to. And you've got to have a, a ladder in good condition because especially if you're picking up a trailer that is clean and dry and you're going to go pick up America's Core, you've got to go check your front and rear washout caps. Tank washes will not tighten washout caps. That is part of the pre-trip. That is also considered part of load security. So you've got, as the driver responsible, you've got to get up on top, check to make sure the washout caps are tight, and you've got to make sure the gaskets are in good condition, not split, and someone hasn't over-tightened the plastic gasket inside and put too deep of a ridge in the seal. If you find that, you've got to take the washout caps, put a new seal in it, put them back on, you're usually okay after that. Same way with this up here, you check out your discharges, make sure they're not leaking. Still continue to move forward, check and make sure all your outer skin is in good condition. Quarter fenders are good. All your quarter fender supports underneath these, these 
brackets here are in good condition, not broke, bent up. And then when you get up front on the other side, you check your glad hand mounts again. Uh, sometimes you'll run across, these are just bolted on with two bolts here and it's easy to snap them right there around the bolts. You want to make sure your glad hand are, are, your glad hands are securely mounted to the nose of the trailer. And then also because it's a liquid tank, your, your heating, uh, your steam uh, lines up front where you hook up the steam to, you got to make sure that's in good condition, everything's there and not open holes and it's best to have a, a Chicago cap on or a Chicago fitting cap on it but it's not necessary but they need to be there and then like your breather line going to the uh, crash box you got to make sure that's in good condition too because not every place uses them but some places do still come around here and I didn't show it on the other side but when you come up to you've got all kinds of bolts up here on your upper coupler you want to get your eyes up underneath that make sure those bolts are there not missing loose anything like that and pretty much for trailer walk around that's about it